Hi there. Welcome to Christmas at the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra and I'm so glad you're here. I grabbed these salt and pepper shakers at my local thrift store for $3.99 for the pair and I thought they were the perfect shape and size for little snowmen. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and spray them with some Rust-Oleum clear matte. That's going to help my chalk paint stick lots better to this shiny surface. Next they're going to get two coats of black chalk paint because all of this design on it is fairly dark in color and I don't want to have to do a million coats of white. So I'm just going to go over it very lightly with the black, give it a couple of coats, lighter coats, and make sure that I don't plug up any of those holes at the top where the spices need to come out. This exact idea came from a subscriber. Her name is Debbie. She thought it would be fun to create some salt and pepper snowman because that would work for Christmas, but then would also take you through the winter season. So Debbie, if you're watching, these are for you. Let me know if you want me to send them to you when they're done. I made sure that these were really dry before I started with the white, but you can see that I'm getting a really nice coverage with the white. Two thin coats, and then I'm gonna go over it with a third in the opposite direction to fill in any of the bumps and brush strokes so it's a little bit less noticeable. To get the really good coverage that I just mentioned, I'm changing the direction of my painting. The first two coats were horizontally across and now I'm going up and down and this is just going to give me superior coverage and it's what I've been doing for a really long time and I really love this technique. So if you want to make sure you're covering something really well with your paint, change the direction of your brush strokes and that will fill in all of the little nooks and crannies and give you a nice smooth surface. Once the white is completely dry, I'm now going to give it another coat of the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear because I want to do some painting on it and I don't want anything to run. So I just want to make sure these are really sealed well so they can be wiped down with a damp cloth and cleaned since they're going to be handled a little bit more often than most of my projects. I'm using an oil-based craft smart black paint pen to add all of the cute little embellishments for the snowman. So first I'm going to be adding some eyes. I'm just kind of making oval shapes and filling them in. This is just an extra fine tip Sharpie pen. I'm just creating some extra little round lines around the outside of the eyes just to make them have more character. With a white chalk marker, I'm just adding a little dot to make the eyes sparkle. With a tiny, tiny little paintbrush, I'm going to create a little carrot nose. I'm using my favorite orange color, which is called Honey Brown. It's from Americana, and it's a really sort of rusty orange color, nothing too bright. So I'm just going to start making a rounded area and then gently get it into a point. You can see what I'm doing here. It's a carrot. Going back to the Sharpie, it's time for the little mouth. So I'm just going to draw those two little arcs that you see that will be the little cheeks. And then I'll put a cute little smile on him, make it a little bit wider towards the bottom and then fill it in. And I think this little face is the most adorable thing I've made in a really long time. He's super cute. I created a his and hers set. So for the little girl, I just drew on a little checkered scarf. And now for the little boy, I'm going to give him a nice black bow tie. I also added some eyelashes to the little girl. I also gave them some stick arms, as you can see here, and some buttons down the front with a little bit of the chalk paint to accent them. I think these little guys turned out so adorable. And Debbie, if you're watching, I hope you love them too. Music 
If you are new to my channel and you like what you see, I'd love it if you could hit that subscribe button. It will really help me reach my goal of 30,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. My second project is also a thrifted find. This is a cutting board. It already had some off-white paint on it. I wanted to freshen it up a little bit, so I'm just gonna go over it with some of my white chalk paint. It's got this section down at the bottom and it also has a portion of the handle at the top. So I'm just going to cover those up and give them a couple of coats. I wanted to give this a stripe to differentiate between the white and the wood of the board. So I'm just gonna mask off some areas. Now, when I pulled off this tape after I was done, it did pull up a little bit of the chalk paint. It wasn't 100% dry. So just make sure when you're doing things like this, you make sure that everything is really nice and dry because you don't wanna have to be repainting things like I had to. I learned my lesson with the tape, so I just went back to my CraftSmart paint pen and a ruler and drew my line that way. Using the ruler and my CraftSmart paint pen, I'm going to add a grain sack stripe in the white area. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't press too hard. You've got to go really lightly with these paint pens, otherwise that prevents the ink from actually coming out. So what I'm doing now that you can't see was just kind of pushing the nib down a little bit on the paper to release more of the paint. So I'm just going to do my two lines and then I'm going to color it in. I'm going to do a third line which will be the same width as the first line that I did with the paint and then I'll have a fun little grain sack stripe area. The other thing I added was a label using my Cricut. I typed out the word charcuterie and with the pronunciation underneath it which I thought was kind of fun. This turned out really nice. I'll probably use it to serve some hors d'oeuvres or things like that, making sure I put some paper down first. For this project, I'm going to use these Christmas trees that are a garland from the Dollar Tree, but I'm going to use them in a different way. The first thing I'm going to do is add some of my dry decks spackling and fill in the holes at the top. Once the spackling was dry, I just sanded it off just a little bit to make it nice and smooth. And now I'm just using a stain that I created just using burnt umber acrylic paint and some water. And I've got that in a little jar here. I'm going to stain both the front and the back of the trees. And I'm going to go up a little bit farther as you see me doing here because I'm going to be needing to create that bottom portion of the star with another color. For the star at the top, I want to keep it fairly neutral. So I'm using this acrylic paint called Warm White. And I'm going to cover up the star on both sides, just like I did with this stain. And then for the bottom two points of the star, I'm going to go ahead and just create a little imaginary line like the top of the tree, just in a triangle shape, as you see me doing here. I'll do the same on all five of the trees. These little trees are going to turn into my little labels for my charcuterie board and I'm going to just take my box cutter and just cut out a little slit at the top of these tiny little corks. These were also from the thrift store. Of course I'm being very careful and going very slow and then I'm just going to use the tip of the knife and just carve out the little bits that I don't need. Then I'll be able to just use a little bead of hot glue and push the trunk of the tree right into the cork. Using some of these chalk labels with the little clothespin attached, I'm going to just pull off the clothespin because I don't need that. And then I'm just going to clean it up with my snips and get all of the extra wood off. Then I'm going to hot glue each of these labels onto the Christmas trees. Even though these labels say they are chalkboard labels, they're really horrible. I seasoned the 
surface with the chalk like you see me doing here and then I tried to write something on with my marker it totally bled all over the place so I wasn't able to do that what I ended up doing was repainting all of these black and then using my Cricut and white removable vinyl and I cut out all sorts of little labels for these trees because I used removable vinyl, I'll be able to just peel those off and then create some new ones for the next party I have. This is Hippo Sublimation. You can see that I've already got part of my Christmas placemat finished here and I'm going to show you how I'll do the next one. So the colors are not that bright when you look on the paper itself. It's the heat transfer process that brings out the brightness of the ink. So what I'm doing here is just measuring my paper to make sure that I cut off any of the excess otherwise it's going to transfer onto my towel if I don't put a Teflon sheet underneath. What I'm going to put on top now is a Teflon sheet but first I'm going to use some heat resistant Teflon tape to hold my project down so it doesn't slide. Once it's all taped up, I am going to take this Teflon sheet, put it underneath and then fold it over so none of the ink transfers onto my towel. I'm using my Cricut Easy Press. For sublimation, you need to use a press like this that's really hot. You need it to get up to about 340 to 45 degrees. I'm doing mine at 330 and I'm actually going to be doing it for about 90 seconds and that just seemed to work for me. Use the instructions on any of the sublimation paper that you get. You also need a specific eco tank printer and you need specific ink. I've got all the information for the Hippo products that I use down in my description box. I have a printer that prints eight and a half by 11 sheets. Eight and a half is pretty much the width of it. You can't get anything wider than that. So I'm just going to be printing off different designs and then adding them and piecing them together to create these placemats. Now, this is so fun and easy to do when you've got the right products and you end up with such beautiful high-end looking pieces. I'm going to make sure that I have all of these free printables down for you in my description box. So make sure you click there if you want any of them. I hope you enjoyed these projects today and I wanted to let you know that this is my very last Christmas series DIY for 2021. I truly appreciate all of your continued support. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. Thanks again for watching. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you in 2022.